Grizz Nation, welcome back to another game day update. The Grizzlies are in Minnesota today, taking on the Timberwolves. So joining me once again for the second time this season is Katie Storm. Katie, we're at your home today. Yes, I'm honored, first off, to be with you again. This is fun. Um, I say fun. It'll be an interesting game here coming tonight. But yeah, it's nice and cold here. We welcomed your Grizzlies to town. I know that we have a really low wind chill today, and we got a bunch of snow yesterday. So I'm sure oh, all of them are just enjoying it, but it'll definitely be a heated battle in Target Center tonight. Yeah, I saw some of their Instagram stories when they landed yesterday and it was like a bunch of snow and I was like, oh, it's warm here. I'm out in a t-shirt, but <laughs> that doesn't matter. Katie, there are some big storylines that I think we need to start off with right off the bat. For the Grizzlies, it is Dylan Brooks being questionable, Jake LaRavia being doubtful tonight, but even worse, let's go to your injury report because obviously there is some questionable is Jaden McDaniels is questionable he had a big role in the last time that the Grizzlies played the Timberwolves earlier this month but Cat is out for four to six weeks tell me about that yeah I mean I'll start I mean you mentioned Jaden McDaniels and hopefully he could return for the Wolves tonight but he's been dealing with an illness and we know how that goes mm -hmm. agility wise and and just what you what your stamina is I guess for taking a, a couple of games off what you're going to be able to do is going to be interesting so hopefully he is back we still don't know what, what he can do. I just think that height would really help the Wolves, yes, with Carl out. I mean, I just want to mention two other guys, though. J uh, Jordan McLaughlin, who's basically the other J-Mac, we call him on this team. He's been out. And Torian Prince, who's been kind of that uh, really good veteran leadership, he's been out, too, with a shoulder injury. So definitely a shorthanded team. And now Carl's added to that list. It was tough to see him get helped off the court in Washington. I'm sure a lot of your fans, just any NBA fans saw that video, not fun to see. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess with the diagnosis coming back yesterday with the MRI, a lot of us are feeling a little bit of relief knowing that it's nothing super severe, but yes, I mean, with a calf strain, that's still tough. He's going to have some time off. And now the wolves are finding themselves in a position of, uh, looking towards their depth. They're turning towards who they have that can really, um, help out down the stretch here. Cause it's looking like January would be, the soonest return we could see Cat back out on the floor, um, hoping for the best for Cat. We know how, at least here in Minnesota, we know how Grady is both on the floor and off of it for this team. So, um, like I said, kind of a a sign of or a sigh of relief knowing that he's maybe going to be back, you know, in a month or so. But yes, the question now is how they can go on without him and. The vibes seem to be pretty good. I just got back from shoot around this morning. Um, Rudy Gobert, you know, he obviously turned or talked a lot about Carl's unique abilities in the NBA. It's going to be hard to replace that, but they're going to just have to focus on a good, strong mindset. They're facing lots of adversity right now. Um, they can get through it. I mean, Kyle, of course, your fan base knows Kyle Anderson very well. And he kind of just looked at us and said, look, this is the NBA. This stuff happens. Guys go down. We have to be ready for it. I'm ready to play on the, on the floor as well as these guys. We all have confidence in each other, regardless of who's out there. And um, he just said, this is a great opportunity to prove ourselves being shorthanded on a three game losing streak. It's a great opportunity to prove what they can do. So there's my big spiel on, you know, Carl being out and everything, but it really could be, I'm feeling positive about all of this. I think that's all you can be. Um, I think, you know, on the positive end of things, this could be a great um, opportunity for this team to really impress us. So we'll see. I was going to ask what the vibe was like, because sometimes when a big player, like your franchise player goes down, like at shoot around the next day or the next game, you know, it is a little somber. So I'm happy to see, or I'm happy to hear that everyone's, you know, like ready for the challenge. Um, let's talk a little bit about the challenge then, because you're going up against a Grizzlies team that, um, you saw earlier this month, it was 114 to 103 here in Memphis. For the Grizzlies, um, Anthony Edwards had a big game, 28, six and six cat had 13 and 10. And so Rudy only had six rebounds. So my question to start off to you is the Grizzlies lead right now at offensive rebounds and second chance points. Rudy le leads this team usually in rebounds per game. Who's helping him tonight. Um, those rebounds are so important with no Carl on the court. Like he has to be cleaning up everything for the wolves, but also everyone needs to help. This isn't, everyone has to be crashing the glass. And that's really been, um, that's really been uh, a focal point throughout this season. The second chance points that yes, the Grizzlies had an advantage the last time that has been an issue for this team. A lot of different things, uh, again, an opportunity, a lot of different things to improve on here tonight. 
Uh, but I think one of the biggest focuses for this team, as far as hearing what Rudy had to say today is the start. Um, we've seen, especially in Washington, we've seen against golden state where the wolves are finding themselves down by a lot in very early in the game. And any oh. team that has that kind of advantage early, well, they're going to be comfortable down the stretch and Rudy, you know, confirmed that today. So that's going to be, uh, definitely, I think one of the biggest focal points for this team is just having a good, strong start being consistent. You know, it goes from the first quarter to the second, their third quarters have improved lately, but that's kind of the overall picture. I think in this game is really what they want to do is be consistent. And yes, the rebounds are going to be crucial. Um, we'll see who really fills in those minutes for Carl to help with that rebounding, to help out Rudy. Um, I think we'll see some increased minutes from Kyle. We'll see some increased minutes from Nas, but yeah, like Kyle said today, we're all confident in each other that we can do this and we can pick each other up. You have to, this stuff happens. You got to be ready for it. And we'll see who's, who's ready for this big opportunity. The last time we spoke, Katie, um, you had mentioned that like getting back on defense, like transition, transition defense was a big focal mm -hmm. point, uh, for the Timberwolves in the last game, the Grizzlies had just 10 fast break points, which is quite low for them. Um, is that something that has improved? The Grizzlies are third in the league in fast break points, but it did seem like the Timberwolves were able to slow them down a little bit last game. Yeah, um, I think something worth mentioning is that Chris Finch has said, we have seen different games of these spurts. I've seen guys and what they can do. That was one game where they were able to contain him in transition defense. Mm -hmm. They know they're capable of doing that. But like I said, in, in the game of being consistent, it goes overall from game to game. So they'll have one strong game of doing that. And then another game, you know, the communication is off. Guys aren't getting back in time and you're getting beat with the pace, with the flow and, and everything that comes with it. So that's going to be another thing tonight, another challenge. Yes, they did it one time, but can they do it again? And I, I think they will be able to. Um, I just think a lot of teams from the start of the season, they're going to try to use their speed to their advantage. Well, I want to talk quickly then. The last thing is about the defense of the Wolves because John Morant is coming off his first triple-double of the season in the Garden. The last time we played you, he had 28, 10 rebound, 28 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. He was close to a triple-double. Now he's had... 20 or more points in three of his four last games, three straight double doubles, and then the triple double. He is just on fire. It's John Morant. Yep. And then in addition to that, Jaron Jackson Jr. is back. It's a guy that did not play against the Timberwolves last time earlier this month. He's also been on a roll. He has 20 or more points in four consecutive games, which is a career high for him. Um, on the flip, of course, Desmond Bain is out, who had a really, he had 24 points against that team. How does Jaron in Des out? change the way you know like the matchup is because now jared probably would have been guarding cat but now cat yeah out. it's very it's very like who are we going to have tonight right i like i said it's going to be interesting to see for as far as the offense goes for the wolves without that makeup of carl how that chemistry is going to click quickly mm -hmm. um but defensively yes uh, carl is a machine he's a defensive machine we've seen what he's uh, capable of doing rudy so is too thing, though yeah yeah that's true yeah it'll be a good one look the grizzlies are five and six on the road Timberwolves are five and six at home. So either way, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be good. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's always fun playing this team. I feel like um, we're playing in the rivalry rivalry week for a reason. So we'll just heat this up. Yes. We'll start it out. We'll get ready for Kat's return um, in a few weeks. Katie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you have a great game tonight. Thank you. Yes, it'll be fun. And um, I told you this before we started recording, but Grizz Nation being there for the first time, because when I was on your podcast last, I said, I am excited to be in Memphis. Can't wait to get here. Did not disappoint. The crowd <laughs> there was incredible. Of course, your home crowd got the win that night. So I know they were feeling it all type of way, but uh, <laughs> it was fun. I was like, you know what? I can see why basketball is, you know, so loved in this town. So shout out to your fans. I just, I think we're going to get the win on our home court. We'll see. Well, it's, it's, it's time for your fans to turn it up. So let's yes. go Minnesota fans. Uh, the game tips off at 7 p.m. Central time. You can watch it on Valley Sports with the Valley Sports Plus app.